Hey Toolerinos, uh, got another item here to work on. It is uh, not a tool, but uh, well, I guess arguably it could be a tool, depending on how you look at it. Um, this is a vintage uh, uh, military style flashlight, right angle flashlight, MX991-U, which after some research on the internet, I find uh, this model with, with no switch guard on the sides. Uh, means this was produced between 1963 and 1973 uh, by Fulton Industries, which is in Ohio. It was only five dollars at a antique shop, which I thought was a very good deal for such a nice looking condition vintage flashlight. So we'll start by getting that off there. And uh, you know, <laughs> it's missing the the lanyard ring. Uh, on the back, but otherwise it seems fully intact. This outer ring here is removable so that a colored filter can be placed in there and screwed back on to change the, the color for signaling purposes. And this part unscrews, and that's where the bulb is. It takes a standard bulb, but uh, I ordered some replacement uh, LED bulbs for it. Uh, on the internet, they have not arrived yet, but uh, and then on the bottom it uh, unscrews and this lower cap is to hold filter lenses this is what was in this one and, uh, and then the next part unscrews doesn't sound too good there. Oh yeah, you can see the uh, the spring is all rusted and corroded from there being a, a leaky battery in there. Clearly, that's uh, needs some attention. And you can see you can unscrew the spring, and that reveals a spare light bulb in the base. So if the bulb burns out or gets damaged, you have a spare bulb with you. So that's kind of cool. There it is. So I don't need cleaned up. And this is going to have a date with evapo rust. And see about uh, getting this old flashlight working again. So it is at its youngest made in 1973 which makes it about um, 48 years old if I'm doing my math right and maybe as old as 58 years old pretty old for a flashlight I would say I'll put the part in there give it a bath I'll give it a day or so and uh, see how it does the battery spring has been soaking for a few days and uh, I did brush it part way through and uh, it looks pretty good. I think the, uh, the evaporous did a great job cleaning that up. So uh, we'll uh, take care of that. So what to do with the rest of this? Um, most of the stuff inside there is copper except uh, this ring here which is rusty I'm thinking I'm gonna just dip this end into the evaporust and let it take care of that rust too and so I poured some of the evaporust out of the cup so it's not quite so deep uh, to get at this rust and then uh, you take off the seal and There it is. I'll let that soak for a little while. Well, Tularinos, the uh, the LED bulbs I ordered for the flashlight are on a very slow boat. They're not going to come till probably the end of April. So I decided to look for another source. And in the process, I found that um, Fulton Industries is still in business is still making flashlights for the military and 
uh, or other organizations. And they sell an LED conversion kit, USA made, and uh, it's pretty cool. They have a LED bulb, and then these D-cell uh, replacements that you put a single AA battery into each one. So since the LED doesn't use much electricity, you, you can put AA's in and it'll make the whole thing lighter. Um, so if you're using it for hiking or camping, instead of having the weight of two D-cells, you'll only have the weight of two AA's. Uh, and these plastic cases with, with a little bit of metal. So still, um, we'll weigh it and we'll see how much of a weight savings it is. But also, they sell a replacement lanyard ring for the base. I mean, I thought I was going to have to make one, you know, just try to bend a, a piece of steel and make it fit. But uh, huzzah, you can actually get the correct part from the manufacturer that still makes them today. How cool is that for a 48-year-old flashlight? They also sell a uh, replacement kit. It has a standard bulb, um, but it has new gaskets and a whole set of lenses, including colors that aren't included uh, in my old flashlight, which basically just had red and clear with a diffuser. So there's blue and a light bulb and new gaskets, another diffuser, red, green, amber, and a clear, a new clear lens. So uh, I can replace the original lens, which is a little bit scuffed up. I can put a nice new clear one on there. How awesome is that? And made in USA. So, if any of you see one of these cool flashlights around and you think, eh, nah, what do I need another junk flashlight for? It's not junk. You can still call these people or go to their website and order the, the replacement parts and restore it to function. Alright, can you see the, uh, the contact down there? It's kind of uh, corroded looking or dirty looking. So I've got to try and clean that by some means. So in order to get down into the, uh, the deep contact down there to clean it, I needed to be able to extend the uh, Dremel-like tool. And I thought it might be a good idea to try to use one of these um, makeup style q-tips because I could use this blunt end that's kind of stiff to uh, rotate down there and, and clean off the corrosion but of course it's not long enough so I uh, whittled away a skewer a bamboo skewer I cut off one end so there it is Let's see if it's going to fit on here. That looks pretty good. So now I just have to shorten the skewer and uh, hope it chucks up into the Dremel-like device and I can get all the way down there. Alright, well, um, I know it's kind of hard to see down there, but uh, it's better than it was, but controlling the Q-tip on the end of the uh, the Dremel was uh, was too difficult because it would start to flail out when the RPM got too high. So it wasn't very uh, successful, but it was better than nothing, I guess. Um, and it is cleaner than it was for sure. Uh, can tell especially by the uh, by the schmutz that ended up on the end of that one, especially. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to. I'm going to lubricate the contact down there with some uh, locomotive uh, <laughs> conductive contact lube that I use on the, the model trains. So I figured I could use this mm, 
Okay. And now, uh, as you can see, the uh, the ring in here is all nice and clean. It was evapo rust, and it was wiped out real good. And uh, I did hit it with a little fluid film, and now I'm going to hit it with a little bit of this contact lube as well. And actually, right around this bottom is the is the primary place where the uh, this bottom spring uh, ends up resting inside here. The bottom spring hits the bottom face. So this little lip is where you really want to make sure you have good contact. So I'm going to wipe that with the lubricant. Alright. We're getting close to reassembly.